After three years of awarding SpaceX that contract, NASA is finally set to begin work this year on the inaugural Gateway Logistics mission. Will SpaceX continue to develop Dragon XL or wait for Starship to take on this critical task? And how will the Lunar Gateway be constructed? All these questions and more will be answered in today's episode of Great SpaceX. NASA finally turns its attention to the upcoming Gateway Lunar Station. To accomplish this ambitious task, SpaceX will develop a heavily modified, single-use version of its Dragon 2 spacecraft, boasting increased propellant storage, more cargo space, and a range of other design modifications. This cutting-edge spacecraft will be the key to unlocking the mysteries of the lunar surface and beyond. Dubbed Dragon XL, this spacecraft will weigh approximately 33,000 to 35,000 pounds at liftoff, necessitating a fully or partially expendable Falcon Heavy launch for each mission to the moon. At the time, this was a prudent decision on NASA's part, capitalizing on existing investments and experience with SpaceX and Dragon, while avoiding any major technical obstacles. Nevertheless, more than two years later, NASA has yet to commence work on the contract. A NASA representative recently revealed that one year after the contract award, the agency had yet to issue a formal authorization to proceed, or an ATP, on the first mission. This was due to the agency's evaluation of the overall plans for the Artemis program and when that mission would be required. The lack of information since then has sparked speculation that the program may be in jeopardy. Speaking on a panel at the Spacecom conference on February 22nd, NASA's Mark Weiss, manager of deep space logistics for the Gateway program, said the agency had waited to start work on the first logistics mission as it focused on other aspects of Gateway. If you look at the overall Artemis architecture, logistics is the shortest pole in the tent from a development standpoint, he explained. The contract has a four-year lead time for the first mission, but he suggested SpaceX might be ready faster than that. We purposely delayed that, turning it on to make sure we're not spending money and throwing resources where it doesn't need to be thrown, he said, while working on other aspects of Artemis. The first Artemis mission to use the Gateway will be Artemis 4, currently scheduled for 2027. That means that NASA is preparing to give the go-ahead for the first logistics mission needed to support Artemis 4 this year. We're looking forward to ATPing that mission this year to enable that 2027 first crewed mission. Weiss said later that NASA has been working with SpaceX on a series of studies to refine the Dragon XL design and examine cargo configurations and other capabilities that could be enabled by the spacecraft. He confirmed that SpaceX will use Dragon XL for those initial missions, but left the door open for using the company's Starship vehicle for cargo delivery in the future. We are all for enabling evolution, he said. We talked to them about Starship evolution and how it all worked together, but we're not there yet because it's still in a development phase. The first components could reach lunar orbit as early as 2025, setting the stage for Artemis III, the first crewed mission to the moon since Apollo 17 in December of 1972. The station will be further assembled in the vicinity of the moon and perform slight orbital adjustments to accommodate specific missions. The first phase will see the union of two critically important elements, a module to provide power and propulsion, and a module to support human activities. For Gateway, these components are referred to as the Power and Propulsion Element, or PPE, and the Habitation and Logistics Outpost, or HALO. NASA is hoping to launch the PPE and HALO together during a single launch of a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket no earlier than May of 2024 at a cost of $331.8 million. Future launches will support Gateway whether to add new components or deliver cargo. NASA also envisions expanding the overall Gateway Logistics Services contract to add more providers. It was noted that NASA issued a request for information last year to understand emerging industry capabilities such as new launch vehicles. We want that. It's just a matter of funding, he said, of adding providers. We've got to get our first mission turned on and get a funding stream going so we can justify an on-ramp. 
In fact, the future with Starship supporting Lunar Gateway is probably not too far away, as SpaceX is preparing to have the first Starship orbital flight as soon as this month. This is the first time the anticipated flight date of the vehicle is in the current month, and with that, a future of fully reusable rockets is getting closer. Starship is an immense rocket, standing nearly as tall as a 30-story building. It's intended to carry people and equipment beyond Earth's orbit to destinations, including the Moon and Mars. It has been pegged by NASA as the main support vehicle for the Artemis mission that will return astronauts to the lunar surface. At this point, Booster 7 remained installed on Starbase's donut-shaped orbital launch mount, which uses clamps and umbilicals to hold Starship in place and power, fuel, and pressurize Super Heavy. In theory, the next time Booster 7 leaves that launch mount, it will do so under its own power. Ship 24 has now been installed with the last heat shield tiles. The strongest sign that Starship's first orbital launch attempt is imminent will be Ship 24's return to the pad and reinstallation atop Booster 7, as well as SpaceX's receipt of an FAA launch license. With testing mostly behind SpaceX, that license to launch may now be the biggest source of uncertainty for Starship's orbital class debut. However, if there are no major hurdles standing in the way of that FAA license, Starship could be ready to launch in a matter of weeks. The same thing is also being planned with the world's first 3D printed rocket. Relativity Space announced that it had secured its launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration and is ready to blast its Terran-1 rocket into space. Terran-1 is scheduled for launch on March 8th during a three-hour launch window that opens at 1 p.m. Eastern from Launch Complex 16 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, according to Relativity Space. The mission, aptly titled Good Luck, Have Fun, is meant to test the expendable lightweight rocket on its first attempt to reach orbit. Terran-1 is a two-stage, 110-foot-tall or 33-meter rocket that's 85% 3D printed, making it the largest 3D printed object to exist and to attempt orbital flight, according to the company. Relativity Space is working towards its goal of making the rocket 95% 3D printed. The rocket has nine Aeon engines in its first stage and one Aeon vac in its second, and uses liquid oxygen and liquid natural gas as propellants. Rocket manufacturers have used 3D printing technology to make rocket parts before, but never on this scale. The rocket's debut will put Relativity Space's proprietary 3D printing process to the test, which uses 3D metal printing, artificial intelligence, and autonomous robotics to create its rockets. Saying that the rocket will succeed on its inaugural flight is not guaranteed given that Relativity Space has never accomplished this feat, and because it's attempting to do so with such an experimental rocket. But hopefully, Terran-1 will survive the turbulence and g-forces experienced during takeoff and not fall to pieces. Relativity Space may be relatively new in the industry, having never reached orbit before, but the company already has big plans. Terran-1 won't be carrying any payloads on its first flight, but NASA already signed a contract with the company to launch a small satellite with the rocket. That's all the information we have for you today. If you appreciate the work my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.